Hey everybody, this is Piranha Z06 coming to you from my downtown condo man cave. And I posted my rig on Reddit, uh, Sim Racing subreddit, and had so many responses asking for this that I decided to make just a dedicated video on how I switch over from the driving setup on my rig to the flight sim portion of the setup on my rig. So I'm just gonna do that real quick. So here we go, let me show you. Okay, so first of all, I just want to apologize for the quality of this video because I'm doing this by myself, so I'm going to be trying to hold the camera, phone, and doing the work uh, simultaneously, so it will be jittery. I may drop the phone, but I just wanted to get the video out there so you can see how easy and simple it is, and it's actually even more simple when you have two hands. So the first thing I would do is take off the steering wheel, which I'll try to do without dropping it since I'm doing it one-handed. There's the... Um, quick release back here. There, pop that off, and it goes down here on the post, storage post. So again, I'll try to do this one-handed. Okay, so now that's in place. So now you can see this is the that the axle, post, whatever you want to call it, um, mounting solution portion of the, the, the wheelbase. Okay, so somebody had asked me, do I change out my wheelbase? No, my wheelbase is permanently mounted, and so are the two DDIs. Uh, they are uh, 3M two-sided tape attached to this Derek Spears button box that is I bought for driving, but I also use in flight sim. So there was the exact space needed between the little carbon fiber panel, as you can you might can see down in there, uh, this little ridge of the carbon final panel goes right to it. And then there's just enough clearance on this side for it as well. And that's the same on both sides. So those never move. Uh, the only thing that moves up there now is here is my handy dandy, self-made up front control panel from a USB number pad. This is just a USB uh, number pad that you can plug into a computer or laptop. So I changed, I put labels on the buttons that I use the way I need to use them because some of the buttons aren't configurable. Like this is the numlock button in, uh, on the keypad, but that button is not functional in DCS, you can't program it. They're actually, there's a zero and a triple zero button. They both register as zero in DCS, so I blacked out that one because I don't use it. And then the enter button is always, you know, a double-sided, double-sized button, so I just blacked out half of it so it looked like a single size button. Then I manufactured uh, this back end, which is just a thick piece of foam, and then a smaller piece of foam rolled uh, to the exact diameter of that and uh, covered it all with black gaff tape to make it look a little better and all I do is I slide try to put the wire underneath it and I just slide it on so now from the back from up here you can see that's um, that's already halfway there for the uh, inside an F-18 upfront controls cockpit so the next thing I would do is put my pedals in place. And to do that, first thing I do, so I keep my pedals stored down here on the floor between, there's just enough room between the, uh, well, there's more, I could slide it further back and it's not an issue, but there's just enough room between the bases of the motion pistons on each side, there's clearance, for the pedals just to fit down here under the pedal tray. So, I keep the board or platform, flight stick, flight pedal platform over here. And I just did this mod too. I screwed a couple of bolts into it so that when the flight pedals are on this, it can't slide forward. So I can push, you know, on them without them sliding. That was a mistake hole that I made first time, but we won't talk about that. So first thing I do is I'll just get this kind of in place, lay it up here. And then I lift the pedals, maybe, get a little more out of the way there, okay. 
Again, this is easier with two hands and faster and uh, less clumsy. So I'll just kind of set that. I'm just kind of prop it up out of the way right there. There you go, okay. So then I put the platform and it slides into one of the ridges of the 8020. And it does so right under my stick mount. And so that foam that's, that's on the bottom side is used to just build up the height so that it fits onto the pedals properly and gives support throughout the board. So again, I slide that in place. You can see it's pretty sturdy up here now. And then I just take my pedals, set them on the board, put them in place, and now they're set. So the last thing to do is just bring over the flight stick, which is mounted here in a spare bracket. And yes, somebody identified it correctly that these are from the Obudo um, Revolution series. Uh, I, that's what the rig I used to have. You can see that whole evolution of that series on my YouTube page as well. Um, so yes, I kept these two. I had ordered extras, so I kept these two. Um, for this purpose. So, and then I have some shims here just to make it nice and tight when it slides down in. And then I also keep a, a nail on a string uh, that is caught on my shim. Hold on. And it might break. Cause it's not, I don't think it's supposed to be. Yeah, that is underneath the shim and it's probably gonna get cut. Uh, maybe that is where I kept it. Okay, anyway, so I'll show you what I do with that. Okay, so this is easy enough. Just lift it up. Bring it over. Again, this is easier with two hands. There are two cables, one for the MFD that's attached to it and one for the flight stick itself. So then I'll get that started. And then I drilled a hole in the post. And yes, that is not supposed to be caught on that shim because there's not enough. The thread is usually longer than that. So I didn't like this solution anyway, so I'm just gonna go ahead and pull that broken. Um, so anyway, there is a hole that I slide the nail through. And that's just so that I don't have to worry about adjusting the correct height every time. So it just stops it from the wires out of the way here. They would normally be down just like that. Okay, so then the nail is keeping it from, and the nail goes straight back. I never have anything back here. I am gonna cut it off, so there's no point, but this was just a mock in place, and I uh, just haven't gotten around to cutting it off. So then I just tighten it in place, and the MFD is always tilted forward when I remove it, so I just tilt it back then. And now you can see I am set up for flights. And that's it. So, like I said, it's, uh, it's very simple, very quick, especially when you have two hands. So, yes, someone asked how often do I do this? Do I do this on a whim, back and forth? And yes, uh, yesterday I practiced carrier landings for about an hour or so, and then I had dinner, and then came back, switched it over, and did three hours of racing. So, yes, it's that simple, and I'm so happy, thankful for the comments and the questions. Hope this answers most, if not all of them. If you have any more, please let me know. I will try to answer them. And uh, yeah, hope you enjoy. I'm glad to be the inspiration for some of you. And if you like, hopefully I can help you out too. If you have any questions, let me know and I will keep making videos or answering your questions on Reddit or YouTube. Thanks again, guys. Oh, one last thing. Someone had asked if I could use the top monitor um, in dogfighting. Could I expand the scene? or the, the space in DCS to use as dogfighting. Yes, you can, DCS will allow you to do that. It takes a lot of work that I haven't done. I'm sure it's not as hard as it seems if you've done it before, but yes, you can add other monitors. That's why a lot of cockpits you see will actually have tiny monitors behind these MFDs and they will have the cockpit actually configured to show in the little monitors behind the, the DDIs. Um, so yes, I could do that, but I use Track IR when I'm flying. I don't use VR, at least I haven't yet. Uh, I don't 
know that I want to because I like the triple monitors and plus I just bought them recently and uh, I don't want to make them obsolete immediately. <laughs> plus, the main thing about VR and flying is it's because you can't, everything is one-to-one -one motion. For me to look behind me is very cumbersome and strain on your neck from what I understand and I, I could see it and understand it and believe it uh, without even having to try it. So I just use track, R, track IR, which you can uh, then move your head around and you can program a curve so that it, your head on the screen, it's accelerated. So like I can move my head just a few degrees and on the monitors, I'm looking behind me. So it just makes it easier. You get used to it real quick, uh, but that's what this camera is for. That's the track IR. So the answer is yes, I could use the fourth monitor for that, but I choose not to at this time anyway. So thanks for the question and keep them coming.